Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Stop Searching, Start Finding, Using Your Brain for File Management. My name is Matt Caton, and I want to thank you for joining us today for today's webinar. We've got a lot of ground to cover today, um, and we're really focusing on using the brain application to store all of your data, all of your important files, documents, and notes and information that come in so many shapes and sizes these days. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about, obviously, basic types of files, Word documents, spreadsheets, and then extend that into how do we store all of our emails and, and important web pages, and information from disparate sources, such as Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, etc. And it, the list goes on from there. And since we're talking about file management, um, it's important to point out that file management really started back in, um, well, modern file management, I would say, with the filing cabinet. Started with the invention of the filing cabinet, which was by, I have to check my notes, Henry Brown, back in 1886, invented the filing cabinet. And when you think about it, really not much has changed. Filing cabinets still exist. In fact, if I were to change my uh, camera around and, and show you the corner of my office, I have a filing cabinet in my office. And if I were to open this filing cabinet up, you would find nothing but extension cords, Cat5 cables, and uh, maybe some old phone chargers in there. The, what you won't find are actual documents, invoices. I try to run a paperless office as much as possible. Many of us do these days and uh, storing a bunch of printouts and files in a filing cabinet is not the right way for me to go. So filing moved over onto the computer. And as you can see on my screen, let me verify that I'm sharing my screen here. Um, as you can see on my screen, the filing cabinet on the computer, whether you're on Windows or uh, Mac OS, hasn't changed much. Of course, we still have files and folders subdirectories, etc. It's still a very, very linear structure. And I'm going to share with you how storing your information in the brain has so many more uh, advantages to the typical file and folder structure as you would see on a Windows or Mac OS. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, throughout the webinar today, the GoToMeeting question panel is going to be moderated by Jay Ofemi. So Jay will be answering as many questions as he can that, uh, that come into the GoToMeeting question panel. So if there's anything that I'm covering today that you'd like to know more about or a related topic uh, in regards to file management, please feel free to write it in there. And at the end of the demo today, I'll circle back and answer as many additional questions as I possibly can on that topic. So here you can see I've got on my screen a side-by-side -side comparison of the brain application and a typical file and folder structure. Now first, let's have a quick overview of the brain. You can download a free copy of the brain at www.thebrain.com, and you've got a 30-day free trial to use all of the pro features of the brain application. And the brain application is meant to be your own digital brain, your digital filing cabinet. And as you can see, the brain reflects many of the same things as we're storing in our file and folder system. So over here on the left, I've got a client's directory, and I've got my clients broken down into many different categories, communications, education, finance, manufacturing, etc. The same in the brain. I click on a thought in the brain, and it brings that thought to the center of the plex and displays all related information around it. So here under clients, I've got clients by industry, communications, education, finance, manufacturing. So pretty similar to what we're seeing over on the left at this point. And when I click from thought to thought, it brings that thought into the center of the plex again and displays all related information around it. So I go into media and entertainment and click on instant dynamics. This is the client that I happen to be looking for. On the left, I'll go into media and entertainment and open up Instant Dynamics Corporation. Once again, 
all of the different projects that I have for Instant Dynamics easily accessible. But there's a few key differences at this point. Over on the brain, as you can see, Instant Dynamics fits into three categories. I could have also clicked down through communications. I could have also clicked through gold service level clients. So all of the different relationships that, I, that Instant Dynamics has with other categories um, or, or topics um, in my business world are reflected here in the brain. And we simply don't see that in a file and folder structure. Now I've got a shortcut. So if I back up a little, back into media and entertainment, and then up into clients. Uh, so I go into marketing, clients, and if I go into communications, ah, there's Instant Dynamics. So I've got a shortcut to Instant Dynamics, but once I get into the folder, I have no way of visualizing or seeing all of those other connections. They're completely lost. And sometimes those connections have a lot of important meaning. Again, over on the right in Instant Dynamics, gold service level clients that's a very important piece of information instant dynamics is entitled to an upper level of customer service and i know that because of the connections that i've made in the brain i have no way of visualizing that in a file and folder system i would actually have to click into legal documentation open up a contract read through their invoicing what did they purchase when did they purchase it oh yes they still qualify for gold service level uh, customer service. So that's clearly visualized for me here in the brain. And now let's take a closer look at the brain. I'm gonna give this a little more screen real estate. And I'm gonna flip my content window over to the right. And let's talk a little bit uh, more about what we're seeing here in the brain. So as I've mentioned earlier, pieces of information are called thoughts. And we've got the active thought in the center, the subcategories, the child thoughts, down below and up above we have parent thoughts and we've already talked about the fact that a thought can have multiple parent thoughts so I've got multiple different ways of navigating to and finding this piece of information and not only that all of the thoughts contain content and that content can be web pages notes and even file attachments and those are all accessible from the content area over on what I have now on the right hand side of the screen and that can be easily rearranged in the brain so you can have uh, the brain fitting your screen as it best fits for your environment I like the side-by-side -side view but there's just a couple of buttons down below uh, or on the bar that split the plex from the content window that let you decide how you want to display your information and make it accessible to you and we'll talk in great detail today about all the different file attachment types that we can have. But let's talk a little bit more first about the Plex. Um, you'll also notice on the Plex that I have many of my links actually labeled. Here again, something you cannot do with a file and folder system. Over on, uh, back in my folder directory, all of these subdirectories, why are they here? What's their value? What's their meaning? There's no way of displaying that information. Um, am I currently focused on the community outreach or is it my see the world ad campaign or the reach out ad campaign? They're subdirectories, but they have different levels of value and I'd have to completely rename that but the particular project folder um, or double click open up the folder, start reading through the meeting notes and content to find out if that's a current active project that I'm working on. And here in the brain, you can see I've labeled the links between thoughts. And we do that by simply double clicking on a link between two thoughts. You see that when I double click, I'm currently focused on this link called Current Focus. Um, and that's the link between Instant Dynamics Corporation and the Reach Out ad campaign. So I can click to highlight a link at any time, add notes for that link, or even file attachments for an individual link within a thought. But most importantly, when I double click on a link between two thoughts, I open up the, the link properties. So I've labeled this as my current focus and even ch color coded, change the color to be a green link so that it stands out a little bit in the Plex. And I can now see that my current focus is my reach out ad campaign. When I complete that project, I'm moving on to the next phase, which is my see the world ad campaign. 
And that community outreach that I mentioned earlier when I saw it in the file and folder structure, that is actually a retired project. It's still a subcategory. It's still in the right location. It's a, a subcategory of instant dynamics. So in a file and folder system, I would leave it there, but I might create another level called retired projects and drop all those folders in there. In this case, I prefer to just simply label the link between those two thoughts. So we're defining the relationship between files and folders and directories as well here in the brain. And finally, another way that the brain differentiates itself from a file and folder system is having the ability to create what we call a jump thought, something that's related to the active thought, but not necessarily fitting into any type of hierarchical structure. So in this case, I actually have people that are linked to the projects or the documents that they're working on. So here's Fred Baxter. He's the account lead for Instant Dynamics. Again, information that wouldn't be available to me in a file and folder system. So I have thoughts for all the different people in my company, and I'm linking them to the projects they're working on and labeling what their responsibilities are. So as you can see, Fred manages all of our clients. He's the actually account lead for Instant Dynamics, uh, knowledgeable on the Nokia account. He's advising on a bugs database, etc. So all that information preserved for me and displayed in the structural interface of the brain, all of those interconnected thoughts. So let's now start diving in and talking about all of these different types of attachments, file attachments, web links, et cetera. I'm gonna jump back over to Instant Dynamics. And as you can see on the right, I'm gonna give this a little more screen real estate now and maybe make my plex a little bit smaller. So we can resize content in the brain very quickly and easily depending on what you're currently focused on. I'm gonna focus on the content window for now. So I've given that a little bit more screen real estate. Each thought that you can create in the brain will always have its own notes tab. So the notes are a very, very easy way to quickly capture information. I use my brain for meeting notes or just quick capture ideas. I also type out, out people's phone numbers, contacts, uh, uh, just brief information about meetings and interactions I have with people on their thoughts, on the notes tab for their thought within my brain. So here I just have some basic information about instant dynamics, but I also have a web page attached. As you can see, I can click to actually load that web content up right there in the browser window. So it loads up and you can see this is just a sample page. It's actually linking to Time Warner, uh, but that loads up right in the content window and I can continue on navigating through a website that I have attached to a thought uh, just by clicking around through the brain's built-in browser. And finally, documents as well. So here I've got a Word document easily accessible, and I can click on the plus tab to add more documentation to this thought. So since we're talking and focusing on file management today, let's start talking about adding files. How do we get these files and all this content into the brain? And there are many, many different ways to do that. We can import data, which we'll be doing today. We can also create new data from scratch or existing data can easily be drag and dropped right into the brain. So let's say I've got a new project for Instant Dynamics and I'll simply name this new projects. So I've created my new thought and you can create new thoughts in the brain again in many different ways. I like to click and drag from a gate to create a new child thought but you can also drag and drop directly into the brain. So I've got a directory here with some sample documents. Let me navigate over there really quickly. So into marketing, I've got some sample documents that I need to bring into uh, this area of the brain. Now the default setting for dragging and dropping into the brain is to create a copy of that file or of that document. So here I've got this project plan. I'm simply going to drag and drop right into the brain that creates, as you can see, a new child thought underneath the current active thought. And the file or the thought name is project plan and it actually has a file attached to it. It's a copy of that Excel spreadsheet. So that's the default setting for dragging and dropping into the brain. But it's very, very too important to point out 
that you can change that setting. If I click on options and I go into my preferences, if you're on a Mac today, uh, you click on the brain and then preferences. And on the behavior tab, here's that setting for drag and drop into the brain. So you can change your default to move files into the brain, uh, leave it at copy, or link files into the brain. And it's really whatever works best in your environment. If you're on a network and you're sharing documents on your X drive with um, a lot of, of colleagues and they're updating those files out there on the X drive and you just want to link to those and that's really what your brain contains is a lot of links to external documents. Change the default settings so that when you drag and drop, you're just bringing in a shortcut to that file. I travel quite a bit. I'm on the road. I'm not even always online, but I've got my laptop and I need access to contracts and invoices and uh, documentation. So typically I prefer to move files into the brain. So when I drag and drop, the files move from one location to the other. There's also keyboard shortcuts. So I'm gonna leave it at copy, but I'll grab this product install. I'll go back to new projects and product install. And I'm going to drag and drop, but before I release my mouse trigger, I'll click on the Alt key, and that creates a shortcut back to that file. And if I look at the, the file properties, I'll click to activate the thought. All my file properties are displayed over on the right, and I can see where this file actually resides, as opposed to an internal attachment that just simply says, this is internal inside the brain. So you've got those choices. Do you want to move files into brain, copy files, or just create shortcuts? And finally, you can always go back and change those uh, attributes. So an internal file attachment, I can right click and I can move this file or copy this file out of the brain. And if I go to a shortcut, I can right click and I can move this file or copy this file into the brain. So uh, the brain is very flexible. You can always go back and modify and change thoughts that you've created, where it's located in your brain or how those files are attached. You can always go back and, and modify and change your preferences for the future so that when you're dragging and dropping, your brain is behaving in the desired uh, uh, pattern or, or process for your business model. So let's talk also about uh, uh, web pages as well. Since we're on the subject of drag and drop, I'll jump right into web content. Let's say also for this new project, we're uh, bringing in some sample websites for a new web design. So I'll create a thought that I'll bring in all my new web design samples. And I've got some existing samples or some existing websites that I really like. I like this website, Lonely Planet. I want to share this with my client to see if they like the sort of big, bold graphics. So I'm going to simply drag and drop from the address bar. Now, whatever your default browser is, um, all the big juggernauts of, of web browsing, Firefox, Safari, I like to use Chrome. You simply drag and drop from the address bar right into the brain. And once again, it creates a new child thought. I'm not sure why it renamed this thought arrow left. The brain does its best to look through actually the coding of the web page and name the page uh, appropriately. So there's something in that web page and a title tag uh, that named it arrow left. But as you can see, uh, the content window over on the right is updating with this uh, uh, with the graphics that are available on that website. So again, it's loading up right there in the content window and I can rename this very easily. So I'll just name this Lonely Planet and I'm gonna give it a thought label. So just some additional context, what it is I like about this website and what I like is big, bold graphics. So by labeling a thought, that's actually what shows up when you hover over the thought. And these are nice little helpful tips for you to uh, just simply remember from time to time uh, what the content of, of this thought is or why it's important to you. Just additional information that you'll see when you mouse over a thought. Quite often um, we're asked, uh, you know, I've got really long thought names. Uh, for all of my thoughts. And I always recommend that people try to abbreviate the thought name to make it as short, but you know, as condensed as possible. But if there's that additional information you need to know about, 
that's when we drop that information, or I like to drop that information into the thought label. Uh, personal choice, where you want to add that context. I could also add big, bold graphics and more information about the website on the notes for that thought. But in this case, I like to just to pop up when I mouse over. So that's an easy way to get uh, web content into the brain. Again, I'll go to another web page just to show you once again. Here's mental floss. This is more of a sort of a, a news feed type website. But again, I'll click and drag from the address bar. I'm hovering in the plex, as you can see, and that creates that new child thought, mental floss. And again, I'll alt click on this thought to open up the thought properties. And that's where I'll add the label new, basic news feed. So some additional information that I want to have about that particular web page. So very easy process to get existing documents, Word documents, spreadsheets, web pages, just drag and drop right into the brain to create a thought for them. And you can always go back and relink that and move that to another location at, at any time. If I want to link this up to the project plan, notice I can just make a link between two, those two thoughts and right click and unlink a thought from its old location. So it's very easy to move that content around within the brain as well. So that's how we get some existing content. We've got many more types of existing content pieces to get into the brain. But while I'm on the topic of basic documents, Word, Excel, sort of the, the Microsoft Office suite, let's talk about creating new documents from scratch. Let's say for this new project, I need to develop a presentation. So I create a thought for my presentation and there's nothing to drag and drop into the brain quite yet. So I haven't gone out to Word to create my script for that presentation and to, to then bring it into the brain. So right here from the brain, now of course, if it's just a script, I might wanna write that out in the notes for this particular thought. Uh, in this case, I want it to be a, um, a Word document. So I'm gonna click on the plus tab and select from a list of templates. Let's talk about this for a moment. Since we're talking about file management today, it's really important to uh, talk specifically about templates that you can create for your brains. Now, if you don't see what you're looking for, or if this list is not yet populated, you can click on this templates button and follow these on-screen instructions. So it's going to open up a directory. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, and it opens up a directory. And anything that I drop into this directory is going to show up for me as a template. So I can go out to Word and create a new file. So I wanted to do this for you today from scratch so you can see how easy you can create your own templates. And uh, this will just be a very basic uh, template with my, my personal letterhead. Let's say I wanna say, you know, from the desk of me. So, and maybe I wanna have that up in the header. Um, I can change that later. This is gonna be my new template. I want every document to start off with that at the top. So I am going to save this to my desktop. File, save as and I'll save this to my desktop. There we go, and desktop. I'll call it, uh, I'll call it Matt Letterhead. So that is on my desktop, and now I can close that document. I want that document that I've just customized and created to be a template to be used in my brain over and over again. A lot of the documents I'm working on need to have my company letterhead or my personal letterhead. So out here on my desktop, let's go ahead and minimize some of these windows. Um, I still have that directory of where my templates, my brain templates exist. And here on my desktop is my matte letterhead. I'm gonna move that in. I can copy it in, move it in. But now that matte letterhead will show up for me as a template in my brain anytime I click on the templates button. So I'm gonna open up the brain again. And now I've got my presentation. I click on the plus tab and 
I've got my matte letterhead doc. There it is. So it shows up for me again and again and again as a custom template to be used in the brain. So if you think about that, you could create your own letterheads, obviously. You can create pre-filled out sales forms, whatever document types you use most often. Um, even file types. If your operating system knows how to open an a .abc file, create a blank .abc file, drop it into the brain's templates directory, and the brain can open up ABC files for you in your desired application at any time. So now my new presentation will be on a matte letterhead. I'll double click and it opens up the matte letterhead for me and I can start with my presentation script. So here is my presentation. I'll save that and that is saved as an attachment internally inside my brain for that specific thought. Another thing about the brain is that it's great for version control as well. Uh, we talk to a lot of creative writers or people that are just you know, keeping track of documents and, and want to keep track of version A, version B. I do that myself. Uh, so from time to time, uh, I will launch an attachment that's associated with a thought in its native application. So it launches in Word. And the brain, by the way, will always launch any internal file attachments or shortcut um, in its native application according to your operating system. The brain doesn't decide how to open up a .doc. That's determined by your OS. So Word documents open for me in Word. Here's my file. Let's say I make some new changes. And I want to keep my original version, but I want now to save this as version two. So I'll just simply say file, save as, and save it in its original location as, so it's going to ask me the file name, presentation version two. Save. And of course, so I can close that and back in the brain, this will update, it just updated in the background. So I've got my original presentation and now presentation version two. Two versions, I could have three, four, ten, as many as you'd like. There's no limit to the number of file attachments that you can have on a single individual thought. So I can have all my different versions in case I ever want to roll back here on, uh, on this particular thought. And uh, let's also talk now then about importing into the brain. We've brought individual documents, drag and drop. You can capture a group of documents and drag and drop those into the brain. But from time to time, it's important to import into the brain. And one very, very simple thing that you can do is import an existing file and folder structure. So let's say I was just starting out with the brain. I'm going to click on File create brain. So here is my new, new customer brain. And I already have that client's directory out in my, out on my C drive. Now, it's important to point out when you create a new brain, the brain is always going to pick a random theme that's built into the brain application. I have some of my own custom themes as well. So it picked my theme I call Orange Crush. Uh, but you can select and change the theme of the brain to reflect the different brains you create. I'm going to just select this light blue background because it's very easy to see. And I'm going to click on File, Import, and select Import a Folder Structure. So this is a really, really great way to import data into your brain and populate a brain very, very quickly. So obviously we already have maybe files and folders out there. There's many different import types. I'm going to talk about a few more of these today as well. But I'll select my uh, folder that's out on desktop two, marketing, and I want to grab this clients folder. So I've highlighted the clients folder. I say OK. And it begins importing that content. Oh, and actually I uh, selected the wrong button. I selected create a new brain. Now that it's ready, first it scanned that document or, or scanned that directory, I should say, and I want to import that into my new customer brain. So I'm just going to change that setting. So you can import as a new brain or import into an existing brain. I'm going to import into my currently open new customer brain, and I click on import, 
And you can see there's, there's quite a bit of data in that uh, structure, a lot of files, uh, <laughs> excuse me, links to web pages, documents, et cetera, but clients, and there it is. Let's actually open that over here on the left. Um, so I imported this clients directory. It had all these subcategories. Every folder becomes a new thought on a, on a file folder import and all of the documents actually become attachments. So if I go into communications, instant dynamics, uh, there's all of my different attachments. So that acme.com, uh, my notes, et cetera, all those documents, corporate portal development, et cetera, it's all there inside this new brain that I just imported. So importing is a great, great way to, uh, and you can see it actually instant dynamics fell under multiple different categories. Uh, so it even kept those shortcuts. Shortcuts that existed in that fo folder directory are now reflected here and visualized for me in, uh, in the brain after that import. Uh, so that's one way to get data into a brain very, very quickly. Another import that I want to share with you, just because I use this quite often, is importing individual documents. So a properly formatted um, um, outline in a Word document or even an Excel spreadsheet. And I've got a couple of samples if I go into my desktop too. And I've got a directory here called Maps. I'm going to import an Excel spreadsheet. We get a lot of questions about this. It seems to be a very popular request and option, and it's obviously uh, easy to do. So I am going to import, I've got a little sample import document, and I'll open up this Excel spreadsheet. So this is what a properly formatted out, um, sort of outline in Excel would look like that can be imported into the brain. So notice that, uh, I've got a, sort of a hierarchy here. Green people that are alive or deceased, under deceased, uh, John James Audubon, John Muir, William Morris. And <laughs> I just wanna highlight this. I've got a couple of um, entries in a cell with a dash in front of it and one with a little plus in front of it. And even, that's called the pipe symbol. If you can see where my mouse is, William Morris, and I've got the pipe symbol and it says favorite. So I'm just gonna capture these cells onto my clipboard. I right click and select to copy. And I go back into the brain and under the desired area, let's say I'm in this uh, uh, com world thought, I right click on the background and select paste text outline as thoughts. So it's gonna grab that structure and paste it here into the brain and now you can see that same hierarchical structure is reflected here in the brain. Green people, alive and deceased. I go into deceased, let's look at William Morris. When I mouse over, it tells me William Morris is one of my favorites. Uh, the plus sign was a web page, so that's added as a file attachment. Um, and the note, the little dash symbol, added the note. Uh, famous quote by William Morris, have nothing in your house that is neither uh, beautiful nor useful, I think. Um, so regardless, a great way to populate areas of your brain, and you can think about that if you've got an outline for a class you're taking or a syllabus uh, or a project, a team project that you're working on. If you can get that into a tab delineated document, you can populate areas of your brain very, very quickly. So we've got many different import capabilities for you for importing data into the brain. And let's move on and talk about some other data sources that you can bring into your brain as well. And I'm referring to uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, <coughs> excuse me, um, OneDrive, etc. There are so many different types of online file storage systems. And even if we don't use them, sometimes we are subject to them. And what I mean by that is I'll be working with a customer that says, oh, I need to send you a file, I'll send you my Dropbox link. Um, or even different departments in your office. You know, sure, we've got that information, we're saving that information out in Google Drive or OneDrive or what have you. Well, I don't use Dropbox or Google Drive or, or OneDrive, but here I'm receiving emails with links to them or um, it comes over in an instant message or, or what have you. So suddenly I need to access that data and it's data that I need to preserve. So therefore, where do I preserve it? I preserve that type of information in my brain. 
So let's start with, uh, we'll start with Dropbox just because I see it open in the background here. I'm gonna go to my local Dropbox directory. Now, again, I mentioned I don't use Dropbox, but I do have a sample Dropbox directory so I can show people how Dropbox can integrate with the brain. When you're using Dropbox, you've got your online access and then there's a local directory that is reflecting all of that, that online data. So any changes to the Dropbox, the local Dropbox directory are reflected online, any changes online are reflected locally. So we can link to both. Uh, your local directory is works very much the same as um, drag and dropping a, an individual file. So once again, I can grab this project status and simply drag and drop it right into the brain. Now that followed the brain's preferences of moving a copy. I've got a copy of that file. So I'm going to right click and forget project status. And since I have this in Dropbox, if I want this area of my brain, files that I'm bringing into this area of my brain, to always show me the latest greatest in case this file gets updated, uh, maybe I'm sharing my Dropbox with someone else, so someone else might update that file, I want a shortcut. So I can hold down the Alt key. So I project status, drag and drop into the brain, but I click Alt, and I've got a shortcut to that local project status file. If it gets updated, online on Dropbox. My Dropbox here locally will, will sync. The file gets updated. I've got a thought in my brain that is a direct link to the file that is a Dropbox item. Now, what if I want to link to the Dropbox item that's online? A couple of different ways to do that. From the local Dropbox directory, I can right click and select to copy the Dropbox link. So that's the Dropbox URL for this thought. I just copy that onto my clipboard. I right click over here in the brain and I paste web link. Now it just simply names that file Dropbox. I can rename it, but you notice the, um, the label is project status uh, XLS. So I can see what that is and that's a public file. So therefore it's actually loading up right there in my, uh, in my content window. If it's not public, I would get the login screen in my brain's content window, just like I would if I were to visit that Dropbox link online. Um, let's talk about the online options. I am actually going to open up, so in case you are not familiar with Dropbox, you're not using it, but you're using Google Drive. Here's my online Google Drive. And it works in much, much the same way. If I've got a local copy of this directory, which I do, I can still copy files or copy links to files from there. Or once I'm online, here I've got this contract.document, I can right click and get the shareable link. Almost all of those online file uh, storage systems and file syncing systems have shareable links. They use the same terminology. So I, if I open it up, I'll see the URL in the browser. I can drag and drop. Here I can click on get shareable link, and I'm pretty sure that's copied to my clipboard. Yeah, I clicked on it, it went away. So when I clicked on get shareable link, it actually copied the link to that file on my clipboard, and over in the brain, I right click, and I paste web link. This time it's a Google link, and Google, I think, yes, Google renames it. So uh, Google renamed that for me, contract doc, and that loads up right there in my content window. So if I receive a Dropbox link in my email, uh, or it's tweeted out to the world or whatever, and it's information that I really want to save. It's very, very easy to get that information into the brain as well. Anything that has an online URL associated with it can very, very easily be captured and uh, preserved in the brain. And speaking of email, we're transitioning from one application to the next. We've talked about local files. We've talked about web pages. Now files that are being stored in Dropbox and Google Drive, and finally files that are emailed to you or just emails themselves. Those can come into the brain as well. Um, first, let's talk about Gmail. Gmail is very, very simple because each Gmail you receive, if you do use Gmail, has its own unique URL. Each individual message has its own URL. Drag and drop that URL directly into the brain. Um, Outlook 
is a little bit different. I don't use Outlook, but I've got a sample Outlook account. So I'm pulling that up now. So here's my Outlook, and it's really just a two-step process. So here is uh, a message that I like the looks of. I wanna preserve this in my brain to talk about, let's go back to our customers area. eSolutions, our new project, we're looking for what's the design of our message gonna be, or I receive a message with some very important information that I want to preserve. Uh, from Outlook, it's a two-step process. I can drag and drop this email onto my desktop. There, I just dragged it right up above and then drag and drop right into the brain. You cannot drag and drop from Outlook directly into the brain. There are many different reasons uh, why, if you're interested in why, send a note into support at and we can and fill you in with some, some additional information there. Uh, but we realize Outlook is a very, very uh, popular email system, so we do want to integrate it with it, and we do. It's a two-step process, drag and drop, from the, the message onto your desktop and then to the brain. And there it is. I've got an internal MSG file. So I can actually go back to the my Gmail, or excuse me, my Outlook account and delete that message. So that message is permanently deleted. And I still have access to it right here from the brain because that's an internal copy of the original message. So I can launch, it's gonna launch in Gmail, and there, there it is, even though I deleted the original from Outlook. So very simple process, two-step process, onto your desktop, then into the brain. There's another option, if this works for you, let's say I already have the thought created, so other email. Every thought that you create in the brain has its own um, content folder. So internal attachments go there and we can drag and drop into that directory as well. So if I right click on a thought or I can control shift F is my keyboard shortcut for opening up a thoughts folder. So every thought has its own internal folder. There I've opened up my internal folder for other mail or other email. And if I have Outlook open, I can drag and drop directly into that directory. So sort of a more direct route into uh, the brain. If I go back to this thought, you can see it's already updated and I've got that internal MSG file. And this works also for Outlook contacts and events as well. So a contact, drag and drop it onto your desktop, drag and drop it right into the brain and you reserve, uh, you save a, uh, I think it's a, uh, I, I wanna say CRV, but I know that's a car. <laughs> I think it's a CVS file or that's a, uh, pharmacy. But regardless, you'll save an internal attachment of those uh, Outlook contacts or Outlook messages, um, events can be saved in the brain. Now, obviously, I can't switch over to Mac really quickly on today's webinar, but if you use Mac's um, contacts or uh, Mac mail, etc., it's the same process onto your desktop first and then directly into the brain. Excuse me. And um, speaking of sending contact direct or content directly into the brain, uh, there's another feature that I really, really want to share with you uh, before we start talking about bringing your brain online and having online access and access from uh, uh, disparate information or uh, not disparate information sources, but uh, different devices such as iPads, iPhones, Android devices, etc. We're going to talk about that as well. But we need to talk today about the brain box. And the brain box is a great way to quickly capture information into your brain. Let's first talk about web content. So I'm going to open up my web browser once again. And I've got some more web pages that I really like that I want to send over into the brain. Some more just interesting designs. This one is not in English, but nonetheless, um, I like the simplicity and the flow of this website. And let's say I don't even have the brain uh, open or I'm not on the right thought right now, but I find a website and I think, hey, this I need to preserve this information. I need to save it in my brain. You can install on your favorite browser. Uh, sometimes they're called bookmarklets, other times they're called extensions. I use Google Chrome, 
So you can go to the Google Chrome extension page, I think it is. There's also information on our website and uh, that provides information about how you get the BrainBox extension on your favorite browser. So here is my Google Chrome BrainBox extension. Any web page I go to, it's appearing for me there in the upper right. And I find a website I want to preserve, I simply click the button. Now, the pop-up happens really quickly. I'm not sure if it captured that in the GoToMeeting, but it just said added. So this web page has been added into my brain box. Let's grab a file and send a file into the brain box as well. So very quickly, I'll jump back here into uh, my directory. Here, I'll just open it manually. Uh, into that sample directory that I had, marketing, and here's some marketing documents. I also want to grab this, these design requirements. I'm going to right click on a Windows machine and go down to send to BrainBox. There's no additional steps to install BrainBox for your file directory system. The same is true for uh, Mac OS. As soon as you install the Brain 10, the BrainBox um, file directory uh, sharing option is already there. The process on a Mac OS is a little bit different. If you have a file that you want to get into the brain box, you'll need to have the brain open and up and running, first of all, so it knows what account to send that file to. It's not going to send this file to everyone that uses the brain. You obviously want it sent to your brain account. So you do need to have the brain open, uh, installed, and, and actually running, logged in with your account. But on a Windows, or excuse me, on a Mac, you would actually drag and drop, so I would grab the any file, drag and drop onto the brain icon um, on the dock uh, for, a, uh, for a Mac, and that would add the file to your brain box. So I'm back in the brain, now I'm in the right area, I've got some time to go in and gather all of that information that I sent over into my brain box and distribute it to the appropriate location here in my brain. So with the brain open, I'll click on sync to make sure I've got the latest information synced to the cloud. And it's downloading all the local recent changes or uploading recent changes I made to the cloud, downloading changes that I may have done from another device. But on any thought, I can click on the brain box icon. And notice there's two, uh, well, I didn't click on this before, but there are two new items. Ishitani Furniture, that was the web page that I had open, and that design requirements doc, the next item that I sent into my brain box. So here's a list of all the documents in my brain box when I find the appropriate area. Uh, first off, it was under new web design. I can click there or I can click the plus tab here and see all the items I have in my brain box. So there's different ways to access your brain box. And there's that Ishitani furniture. I want to add that as a new child thought under ideas for my new web design. And as far as the document, the design requirements, um, maybe I'll make a new child thought here. Requirements for this new web design. And I worked on that earlier and added that document into my brain box. Now I'll add it from the brain box into the appropriate brain that I'm running and specifically the appropriate location. So BrainBox is a great way to easily capture data and information, send it over to your brain to have it cataloged or categorized at a later date. And now let's talk about, now that we've created uh, a brain full of all of our most important files and documents, our important web pages, notes, uh, we even have emails and uh, links to documents that are on Google Drive and Dropbox, etc. I can access all of this information very, very easily from one application here on my desktop. But what if I'm on the road? What if I am at a friend's computer and I need to pull that information up or just uh, at another workstation in my office? I've synced this brain to the cloud, so I've got online access. I'm going to open up my web browser and go to the brain. You can log into the brain and in the upper right hand corner there is a login button. I'm actually already logged in on another tab. And here are all of my online brains. So any brain that I've created, I can sync to the cloud and access everything in that brain from 
uh, from the web. And this particular brain is called eSolutions Consulting. So here it is in the cloud. And all of that recent information that I just added, if I go into clients and then navigate down to clients by industry, here are all of my media and entertainment clients. And I can open up Instant Dynamics. And I think I created a new project. Yeah, there it is, new projects. So I'm clicking through this very, very quickly, but new design. And there it is, Lonely Planet is the uh, web page that I just added and wanted to access. So I can access that right from the cloud. And actually, new web design, I added a few more things. So if I click on sync, uh, I've got this brain, I believe, set to auto sync. Maybe not. I'll check here in just a moment. But you can always manually sync to get your latest changes, or you can have your brain set to auto sync. So it's just constantly syncing in the background. And now if I return to the brain on the cloud, let's just refresh new projects and back into new web design. <clears throat> there are all those new thoughts that I just added. Ishitanage furniture, my requirements, and there's that document that I need quick access to. And this, again, is from my web browser, not from the desktop app. So any machine that has internet access, I can log in and access all of my digital information. There's something that you certainly can't do with a filing cabinet uh, or even Windows files and folders unless you're completely mirroring and replicating um, all of that data, your web pages, your uh, preserved emails, your documents, et cetera, et cetera, on multiple devices. And finally, I actually have a nice little tool that I like to use uh, to broadcast my iPhone. I'm about to broadcast my iPhone here on to, let me log in first. And I'll screen mirror. So I think I'll get a little code that I can type in. There it is, 8740-8740. So I have here on my phone, or it's, a, it's a little behind, but this is my phone and everything I'm clicking on you're seeing happened here uh, actually on my desktop. So I can click to launch the Brain application. And there's a little bit of a delay between the, the phone and what's actually showing up on the screen. But there you can see I went in to uh, look up uh, a little bit of information. I'm in the wrong brain right now. This is one of my business brains. I typically don't share this brain, so I'm going to be very careful about what I tap on. Let's open up my eSolutions brain. So there's eSolutions. And I can click on the sync button. And you can see there is a, a delay. It's actually I'm already on my phone on the eSolutions thought my uh, – uh, Reflector app is a, a little behind just because of the go-to meetings probably slowing it down. But regardless, everything that I put here into the brain on my desktop and sync to the cloud, I have access to from my mobile devices. So I can open up my phone and quickly look up a phone number, an email address, a meeting note that I took last week and preserved in my brain, now available for me in my pocket. And there you can see on the screen, it's slowly catching up with what I've clicked on here on my, uh, on my phone. There it is. So I've got access to my See the World. Oh, I'm holding up a blank uh, phone for you. See the World ad campaign. And it's all available for me everywhere I go from my mobile device. And if you look down below, you can see there's a brain box icon here as well. I can go to different types of uh, 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 applications on my iPhone and add information into my brain box that I can then add onto into my desktop at a later date. So we've taken all of that digital information, preserved it in one location, access online, access from my mobile devices as well, and any piece of information I have is now filed away in my digital brain, which where I can access it from anywhere in the world. And with that, that's everything that I wanted to cover today in regards to file management in the brain application. And I saw a lot of questions. Jay's been doing a great job on answering all of these questions that are coming in in, uh, in the GoToMeeting uh, question panel. There's a couple of big questions that uh, Jay just shared with me that I want to uh, maybe take a moment to actually answer here on the phone. So let's go ahead and I'm going to unshare my screen. 
stop mirroring. There we go. And back into the brain. And let's see what kind of uh, questions we're getting today. The first question uh, that came in and uh, multiple questions related to this, apparently, uh, with the different drag and drop options, what happens to the original file? So that's an excellent question. And the original file, it really depends on your settings. So here in the brain, if I go to options and go into preferences, if my setting is to move the file into the brain, then as I mentioned earlier, every thought in your brain has its own internal folder. So that file is moved from its original location into your brain database. The brain database is a very uh, complex database, um, but there is a directory of, of files there or a directory of folders. Each thought has its own folder and internal files are stored on their thought, in their thought folder. <clears throat> so the file is not renamed. The file is not compressed. So even without the brain running, I can do a search on my C drive or if I'm on a Mac, I can do a search through Spotlight for a file name and still find a file that is being stored internally inside my brain. So it's moved internally in your brain if that's your setting. If you say copy, then you've got a copy of the original internal in the brain and the original copy wherever you were dragging and dropping from. And finally, if your setting is link, you're just linking to that original. Nothing goes into your brain other than a path to that original file, so it's not changed at all. So excellent question, and it really depends on your brain setting as far as where the individual file goes. And then uh, the next question that would seem to be popular is what's the best way for searching through existing thoughts in the brain? Thank you so much for asking that question because it's something that we didn't even get a chance to cover today. Uh, the brain search is incorporated with your operating system. So on a Windows machine, it's incorporated with Spotlight. On a, or excuse me, on a Mac, it's incorporated with Spotlight. On a Windows machine, it's incorporated with uh, Windows desktop search. So all of the thought names, the thought labels, all of your notes, all of your internal file attachments, even all of your shortcuts, if you're using just shortcuts, if those are being indexed by your operating system, the brain search will pick them up. So therefore, in the brain, I can search for the word power, and the search results are broken up into a few key categories. First are all of my thoughts, uh, links, so if I've got a link label or a, a note on the link, it shows up, or events, something we didn't cover today, adding event reminders to thoughts in the brain. But I can click on any one of those <clears throat> to go directly to that thought. There's obviously the word power showing up in the thought name. And if I click on the search box, once again, it takes me to my most recent search. So there are all the thought names and events, and down below are all of the notes and attachments. So if the word power appears on my in best DB, so that's a database uh, thought, and there it is, the word power showing up right there in the notes for that thought. And finally, file attachments. So the word power, not just in the file name itself, but in the text content of that file, the brain picks that up, and so here's this winning edge presentation, it's a PowerPoint, but in that document, I click to activate that thought, I can launch that file, the word power will show up somewhere inside that actual PowerPoint uh, document. So a very, very powerful and useful search that shows up um, uh, that is, can be utilized in your brain as well. And the next question that came in, if you change the structure of a Google Drive file, is it reflected in the brain? Well, it really depends on which, which you're linking. So with Google Drive, if you're linking online, um, if for whatever reason the URL changes, um, then you're going to be preserving a link to a URL uh, that is maybe no longer there. But if the URL stays the same, everything is, is fine within the brain. Now on the desktop, and this just came up recently, and I think this is probably what you're referring to. Let's say you're linking to a file on your desktop, and you've got a folder, a directory called uh, Google Drive, and for whatever reason you rename that Google Drive 2 or My Drive or what have you, but the internal structure is the same. You just renamed the, the folder uh, where it's stored. 
and you've got a shortcut to that directory. So the shortcut will no longer work. It's looking in, and let's get back to that shortcut that I created here earlier. Uh, so the shortcut is pointing to, here's new projects. Uh, there's my shortcut, product install. So it's pointing to C, users, the brain, desktop, desktop two. So let's say I rename this desktop two directory to be desktop three. This link in the brain no longer works and neither do any of my other files that are pointing to desktop two. In the brain, we can click on file and we can go into utilities and utilize find and replace. So we can say find and replace. I won't have time to show you all the different attributes of here, but this is incredibly useful. External attachment paths, that's what we're looking for. Anything named desktop two. Uh, let's ignore case and preview. Do I have anything linking? Yes. Oh, I've actually got two that are linking to desktop two. And we can say, all right, rename desktop two to desktop. This is a test brain, so I don't mind doing this. Desktop three. There are two items. We'll replace those. And you saw in the background, it just renamed that path for me, desktop three. So now it's saying file not found because the file actually is still desktop two on my uh, on my directory system. But you can see how useful uh, that search and replace is. You can search and replace for thought names if you've got a whole brain all about product X and product X renames itself to product Y. Uh, it's a lot of thoughts that you need to rename in a 10,000, 50,000 thought brain. Search and replace really, really comes in handy in scenarios such as that. And then finally, the last sort of question that was asked multiple times that we want to address, any other import operators to keep in mind? You know, you can click on file and import and see our full list there. So I didn't import a Word document today. Um, I can import really quickly a, a mind map. Uh, so I'll say select a free mind file. So there's other mind mapping applications out there that we can import into the brain. One of them is FreeMind. So if I go into my C drive and, uh, nope, sorry, this is on my desktop. Desktop two, my maps. I think, yeah, I've got this Laura Bloom Furniture uh, FreeMind file. And if I were to open that in FreeMind, I actually don't have FreeMind installed on this machine. Um, so let's say I preserved that from when I was using FreeMind. Now I've discovered the brain. Uh, some of these other mind mapping files, uh, they're, you're limited into the number of connections you can have or attachments. It's, it's got a finite number that you can build to, and then there's no more room. The brain is completely unlimited. So I imported this brain as a new brain. I'll say open. And I've got a new brain called Lore Bloom Furniture, and there's that free, it started out as a free mind file, but now this is all imported into the brain, and I'm ready for no limits mind mapping. I've got as many different uh, thoughts and links I'd, as I'd like to create. It's uh, in, infinite, so there's no uh, limit to the number of thoughts and nodes you can create with the brain. So therefore, we've got those import capabilities of other file types. So that's something to keep in mind too. And in that list that you see, I obviously don't have time to import all these different file types today. So if you'd like to receive a sample file of any of these or have more information, uh, and this is a great uh, sort of transition to our conclusion for today's webinar, please write into support at thebrain.com. Uh, if you'd like a sample of my Lore Bloom Furniture mind map or free mind file, .mm file, I'm happy to share that with you so you can see the structure, what it looks like in free mind versus what it looks like in the brain. If you'd like a sample Excel spreadsheet uh, or dot .doc file, uh, let us know and we're happy to share those with you to, uh, to help you see uh, sort of what the structure looks like and create your own for importing into the brain. And of course, any other questions that uh, that you may have. Uh, feel free to write those into support at thebrain.com. Myself, Jay, Brigitte, our entire support team, uh, we're happy to help you out in any way that we can. So, and I see another question that comes up a couple of times in the GoToMeeting question panel. Uh, is today's webinar being recorded? It certainly is. 
So we'll be emailing you a link with the uh, recording if you attended or even if you signed up and didn't attend or had to leave early, you'll receive an email link with uh, today's recording. Thank you very much for joining us today for Stop Searching, Start Finding, Using the Brain for File Management. It's a pleasure to share all the different features of the brain with everyone. And we look forward to hearing from you again. Enjoy the rest of your week. And as always, enjoy your brain. Thanks, everyone. Bye.